Hi, I'm Antonio Mora. In the keynote speech to the 2004 Democratic National Convention that launched him to political stardom, then-Senator Barack Obama argued that there's not a liberal America and a conservative America, there's the United States of America. That has been especially true in times of crisis, when the country has found a spirit of shared challenge, come together, mobilized, and rallied for the greater good. Unfortunately, among the many disturbing aspects of the coronavirus pandemic is how it's dividing Americans almost as much as it's uniting us. Surveys have found a huge divide in the attitude toward COVID-19 between Republicans and Democrats. Even though the gap has narrowed as the disease has become more prevalent, this graphic shows how a far greater number of Republicans were not concerned at all about a coronavirus outbreak in their area as recently as last week. That's partially because the pandemic has disproportionately affected liberal metropolitan areas along the coasts and in the industrial Midwest. As you can see from this Johns Hopkins coronavirus tracking map, COVID-19 has had a relatively small impact on the red states in the middle of the country. In fact, no red state is in the top five when it comes to total cases, and only a couple are in the top 20. That has reinforced attitudes in red states that the threat has been overstated. But much of the blame for the divide has to go to the lack of trust in the political establishment after a generation of political and media polarization. Louisiana Republican Senator John Kennedy had this to say during the stimulus debate. This country was founded by geniuses, but it's being run by a bunch of idiots. He was angrily targeting Democrats, but neither party can claim the high ground. As recently as March 9th, President Trump said he wasn't concerned at all about the coronavirus because we've done a great job with it. When the U.S. had only 56 cases in February, he said, quote, we're going down, not up. We're going very substantially down, not up. Mind boggling. Meanwhile, his opponents slammed him for shutting down travel to and from China, even accusing him of racism. If he hadn't made those moves, who knows how bad the pandemic would be in the U.S. And some of the pork that Democrats wanted in the stimulus bill, putting their political priorities over the needs of the American people, was nothing short of scandalous. A Gallup poll found that the president, vice president, and Congress have favorable approval ratings in their handling of the crisis but not by much, and those ratings are far lower than what their predecessors have had after other national crises. The lack of trust in the news media isn't helping either. The Gallup poll found that it is the only institution in the country that has a negative approval rating in its handling of COVID-19. The echo chambers that have developed in recent decades with news organizations that act more as advocates than objective sources of information have led to the opposing sides mostly getting only one message, the one that they agree with. Why would liberals in blue states trust Fox, which downplayed the threat from COVID-19 and even argued it was an anti-Trump conspiracy? Why would conservatives in red states trust CNN and MSNBC, which often seem to care more about attacking Trump than informing on the crisis, especially in the aftermath of their error-filled reporting and punditry on what the Mueller investigation would find? There are some signs of hope. The Senate managed rare unanimity in approving the stimulus bill, and the White House is on board. Many individuals, companies, and community organizations have stepped up in the effort to combat the coronavirus. The efforts of healthcare workers around the country in the face of this challenge are nothing short of heroic. In closing, managing the divisions among red states and blue, liberals and conservatives, corporate America and Main Street has to be an effort that involves the whole country. We all have to do our part and deal with it seriously respecting the social distancing measures that will help us win the battle against the spread of this insidious disease.